Hi, I'm Belinda Luscom. I'm an editor at large at Time magazine. Today's 10 question answerer is David McCullough, the author of nine books. His newest is called The Greater Journey Americans in Paris. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Now, your new book is about a bunch of Americans who moved to Paris and they were a mix of professions, largely artists, um, writers, and the effect it had on them, and thus, I guess, the effect it had on America. It seems like a, a sort of strange subject, considering your history. What made you think of it? Well, I'm drawn to it because it's a big period of the experience of Americans in Europe, and in Paris in particular, about which very little had been done. And it's the period of 1830 to 1900. We know a good deal about the time when Franklin Adams and Jefferson were all in Paris, and we've heard more than a great deal about uh, the 1920s and 30s, the Hemingway, Fitzgerald, Gertrude Stein time. And my feeling was that this period brought to France for a very specific kind of ambition a group of Americans who in many ways um, are among the most interesting and, and important figures in American life in that, in that span of time. And I also feel very strongly that history ought to be seen as a great deal more than just politics in the military, and this was a chance for me to illustrate that with the lives of these individual people. Who was your favorite character from your book? Augustus St. Gaudens is one of my favorite characters I've ever written about in my writing life. Infinitely interesting man, complicated, immensely talented, and important an immigrant shoemaker's son who was put to work at age 13, street kid here in New York, who uh, felt he had a talent that could be, could be something. And, and he was determined to excel. They all were. That, they're ambitious to excel, I think, is the common ingredient in, these, in the outlook of these young people. Remember, there were no schools of art, no art museums here. No schools of architecture. If you wanted to become an architect, there was no place you could study architecture. So you went to Paris. Samuel Morse, he was one of the guys that fascinated me. How did he go from portrait painter when he went to Paris to the guy who invented like the single line telegraph and the code? Well, I don't think in that day people saw that they had to necessarily belong to one category. The fact that that uh, Morse was a painter, and a very gifted painter, brilliant painter, uh, did not mean that he couldn't have other ideas. And while he was in Paris, he got the idea for the telegraph. Now, a man like uh, Charles Sumner brought back another kind of an idea. He brought back the realization for him that we in America uh, treat, treated black people the way we did, largely because of what we'd been taught, and that treating black people, people as equals was part of the natural order of things because he saw it demonstrated in how the French students treated black students at the Sorbonne where he was taking courses of all kinds. And that, that changed our history because Sumner, who was only a young lawyer then, decided to devote his life to politics and to abol the abolitionist movement, be became the most uh, powerful voice for abolition in the United States Senate. So if, that, if the book were only about that one man's one experience in Paris and how it mushroomed into a larger effect on the country, that would have made the point. But I wanted to make the point in a variety of ways because I believe so strongly that history is more than just soldiers and politicians. Do you ever wish you'd stayed at Sports Illustrated? No. Never? No, I loved being a Time Inc. I, I worked at Architectural Forum, uh, which is no longer pub being published. Mm -hmm. And I worked at Time. I worked at three different places. I got wonderful training, made great friends. I learned a lot about writing, learned a lot about self-editing, and which is the real point of it all, learning to edit yourself. Uh, but I was ready to move on. And when Ke President Kennedy was elected and he called on people to do something for their country, I took it very much to heart and went to Washington to work with the U.S. Information Agency under Edward R. Murrow. And that was that was very exciting, and I learned a great deal there of a different kind. Now, from the point of view of the present, um, we look back 
we look at history and we think, you know, often in a sort of a childlike way, how could people have possibly owned slaves? How could that, yes. how, what was the thinking? Yes. How could we have thought it was okay to not educate women? Yes. What do you think our, the, pe- the people who come after us will look back at us and say, how, what were they thinking? How could they have done this? How could they have s- spent so much time of their lives sitting, watching television? You mean they spent seven hours a day watching that? That is a really good answer. Not what I was expecting. David McCullough, thank you so much for coming and seeing us today. Thank you very much. I've hugely enjoyed it. I truly have. Thank you.